you told us that the school was broken down, so you found out who was responsible and you got them to fix it, and you helped that. You have an incredibly daunting task right now uh, with the work you, you do. If you had to describe your job in three sentences, what would your job description be? Well, firstly, it's leadership. When I pitched for the job, I said the last thing UNDP needs is another development expert sitting at the top of the table. What it needs is leadership, advocacy, in very, very tough times, because this century our world has experienced multiple crises, whether they've been food shortage, global economic financial uh, issues, the mega disasters of climate and earthquakes. There's a lot going on out there. And in development, someone needs to lead advocacy for what needs to be done to make it better. So, so that's my job. You said that you had more power uh, when you were leading New Zealand, but now you have more influence. When you took on this job, what was the biggest transition for you? Well, firstly, I'd, I'd come from leading a country. And so you, you're constantly in the news as a leader of a country, big or small. And the, the media is uh, scrutinizing very, very closely. You, know, you, you trip over, that'll, that'll be the front page. Uh, so to go from that to being able to take perhaps a more reflective stance uh, with, uh, with media and presentation, y your every move, daily movement isn't of interest. What's of interest in this position is the ideas, uh, the thought leadership, uh, the actions that are making a difference in developing countries. And, and that's quite, quite satisfying. I loved my job as Prime Minister, but I, I like this too. There's obviously uh, still gender barriers for women in politics. And so often we hear about women wanting to affect change, but they don't want to raise their hand to run for political office. What would you say to women who want to be involved, but may not want to take the plunge? Well, firstly, they look at the incredible attack politicians come under. And so people say, do I need this? Could I have a satisfying career doing something else? Often also for women, there are quite real family issues because the reality is that in most societies women still disproportionately have uh, the responsibility for, for family. And then there's money. I think that's a particularly daunting challenge. And men tend to have more networks into where the money is uh, often than, than women do. Now, what is the case for wiping all that aside and saying I should do it? The case is that politics needs women Why? actively engaged because uh, if you are out of sight, you are out of mind. If women aren't there putting the issues, supporting other women, uh, advocating for policies that will make a genuine difference to women's lives, how can we expect the policies will ever be adequate? So we have to be there. How has gender influenced your career in positive ways? We talk about the challenges, mm -hmm. but how do you think it's helped you or been a benefit to you as you've ascended in, in the great public service roles and global roles that you've played? Overall, I'm inclined to think that it's been a benefit because I, I like to think I, I bring a perspective of, of what it's been like to be a girl, a woman, making their way up and creating a ladder that others can climb up as well, making it seem possible that you can aspire to these things and do them credibly. It, it, it's also true that as a woman leader, you attract probably a disproportionate amount of influence because there are so few of us, you, you tend to become uh, more widely known than perhaps your own little little country's size and uh, and uh, influence would justify. So I, I think overall it's probably, I've made it work to my benefit, but it was tough getting to the top. I have to say that I don't want to sound like it was easy. It was incredibly difficult. Now that you're working on a global scale and such an advocate of women in countries where women's rights mm -hmm. and culturally there's still huge barriers, do you still feel those gender discriminations or, or challenges, even in a position such as yours? Well, you know, I, I, I weep when I see uh, what a lot of girls and women in our world put up with in their daily lives. Can we imagine being taken from our family and put into a marriage as a child? Uh, as a young teen, can we imagine having no choice over when to have children, how to space them, uh, not having access to basic services, being told that your education is not so important because you're a girl? 
uh, not having uh, the access to the credit, the, the bank account, the, the right to own land, to inherit land that might make you uh, better able to run a small business or make your, your, farm, your family farm profitable. There are a lot of barriers in the way of girls and women. And, and part of our collective mission has to be to support women to knock those barriers over. And I do think, as, as Hillary Clinton and others have often observed, that it's also smart economics. It's a question of rights. But for a country, if you're going to deny the full potential being reached for half your population, aren't you selling your country short <laughs> in, a, in, in gross domestic product, in, 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 in what you can achieve uh, for your people? So, so we have to have a real sense of mission about this. Do you think women tend to put pressure on themselves more than men yes. to do it all? <laughs> yes, I do. Why? Uh, because I, uh, somehow there's a feeling that we have to prove ourselves over and over. We don't. If we're good at what we do, if we're proficient at what we do, we'll get there. We, we don't need to work ourselves into a state of high blood pressure and cardiac collapse. We have to keep that, that sense of balance that makes us human.